Hello, I am David W. Parker. This is Programming Today I Learned SvelteKit Svelte Series. Today we're going to be upgrading from one version of SvelteKit to another. And we'll just do a little follow along on that. So let's go over here. Let's go look at the kit docs. Let's go ahead and make sure we're looking at all this. So one thing to note is, you know, SvelteKit is still in beta. So it's changing constantly. So something that you want to be aware of is they have a change log here. So this lives in SvelteKit packages kit change log, and they're updating this constantly. So and then they have the end of the hash here. Unfortunately, these aren't links, so you can't just look for it. But let's say we're on um, one of the ones I wanted to look up recently was don't recall but let's say we want to do this rename layout to uh layout dollar to under double underscore so take that and you can just throw that in the repo and you can look at the commit for it and you know you can read a little bit about it and he, they reference here rename and it closes 1149 1370 you can see there's two issues here um so you can see you know how this is how this is done and it says close 11.49. So just something I would check out um, and be aware of. Um, hello, I'm David W. Parker. If you don't know, I create SvelteKit and Svelte tutorials. I create some Rails tutorials and a bunch of other stuff. If you like this type of content, support me on Patreon, uh, like and subscribe, and or buy me a coffee. So in this episode, we're going to upgrade our SvelteKit version. And I'm going to explain what I did. And I have a bunch of files here, and we're just going to look at them in the Git graph so you can kind of see just the differences of, of what I've added. It'll just be a little bit easier. So the first thing is I just went wildcard, and I just did npm update. So this updated more than just Velkit itself. It updated a few more things. So we can go ahead and look at that first. So the first thing, as you could see, is this Velkit adapter for Versal was updated. And then so was Velkit itself. ESLint was upgraded, PostCSS was upgraded, Prettier, the Prettier plugin for Svelte, as well as Vite. So all of those were upgraded. And the reason I kind of went with that is because in the past I've had issues where I upgraded SvelteKit and Svelte was out of date and there was issues there, um, but I didn't realize that I needed to upgrade Svelte at the same time. Now, obviously, that can be pretty dangerous uh, depending on what your dependencies are. So use caution here, you know, do it in a new branch. Um, and make sure that you can always revert if you need to. We'll go ahead and look at our package lock real quick. I'm not going to go through all of these. So ESLint down here has changed. Um, again, the Versal adapter. So the main thing is our SvelteKit version. I was on 96 before and now on 108. So if we go back to all the way back here. So here I'm, I am all the way current now on 108. But I was all the way back down here in 96. So that was before, you know, renaming that Svelte to Svelte kit was a, a change. I'd add to my git ignore. Removing git context was a big one. Uh, changing from layout to layout. Those are probably the biggest three. So let's go ahead and dig into what else we changed. All right. So they changed the Svelte kit config dot the CJS. And I'll leave that open here. And it's now just dot JS. And you can see they changed the format as well. So instead of using the older format, they're using this the newer format for imports, etc. And so there's no module that exports as well. So you need to make sure you do that. Um, other than that, they also had removed uh, the Vite no external a little while ago. One thing that I will commonly do, and I highly suggest this when you're upgrading your app, is go ahead and create a new demo app from the, not the skeleton, but the, the demo, full demo app. And you can see what theirs looks like and compare to what you're currently using uh, because they're going to keep this working all the time. So that's been helpful to just make comparisons to, by the way. Uh, tailwind here, I just added JIT. That wasn't an actual change. That was just for my own sake. Uh, package these. I added the prettier ignore. I just copied the one from the demo app. 
git ignore, you know, we started this app on Sapper. I don't need those anymore. So I removed those, and then I added the dot silk kit one to the git ignore. Next up here, I just renamed my hooks from index uh, and actually just down to the full hooks JS. I don't know why this is on here twice. Hooks. It shouldn't be. It's kind of odd if it is. It's still there. Oh, weird. So let me just remove that real quick. And I'll make sure to commit that before I upload it to the GitHub for you guys. Anyway, so hooks uh, is here. And so the main thing here was we removed the git cookie, or excuse me, git context. Going crazy here. So actually, a little look at the original here. So git context is now gone. And instead of getting the context in here, we now have the uh, request object itself. And we moved the cookie information into the git session. So that's all here now. This was in git context before, so this used to look like this. And then the git session itself was taking in the context. Now it takes in the request. So all of this information is now in git session. In our handle here, uh, the importing these metas, and I don't necessarily need these in the session, but I threw them in there, uh, are now in the request.locals API endpoint. So still using the same imports. Uh, and so we have this request locals, and those were available to us in um, other sections of our application, which will become apparent soon. Um, next up, I have these shared APIs. Um, I just went ahead and threw that if statement that was wrapping each of these Git form bodies. So that's not an actual a part of the upgrade, just some code cleanup. And so that way, in each of my endpoints here, you can see I don't need this extra step for the if around. I can just call the git form data every time. And I said, here's the locals. So now instead of request.context API endpoint, we now have request locals API endpoint. And that's going to exist in all of our endpoints, the form body change as well as the request locals. So the four endpoints I've written so far, this one I removed the git form body. I don't remember why I hadn't removed it thus far, but same wrapper here, locals here, and then finally the same one just for this locals here. So those are our four endpoints. This uh, error and layout are both new files, um, but they're technically not new files. It's just a rename. So this used to be dollar layout and dollar error. Now they're double underscore. Uh, this global DTS, I just made sure and copied out what is the latest from the Silkit demo. I had these two extra lines here. I'm not sure if I needed those or not. I'm not even really using TypeScript, so I should probably remove this all entirely or migrate fully over. Um, this, again, is that same hooks. And really, that's it. It was a pretty simple upgrade for, from these two versions. Um, let me go ahead and... Just copy this from my runway. And let me get my back end server going. I'm going to take a second here. And so everything should just still work fine. If we go ahead and I'll just open up the console here. So Here's our application. We're not logged in. Still logs in fine. Logs out fine. And if we want to go ahead and turn off JavaScript here, it should still also work fine. So sign in. This shouldn't work because we haven't done the protected route yet. View pages, test, test. And there it is. So everything still works. Nice and simple upgrade. Again, I suggest making a, a application from the whatever is the most current version of Cellkit or whatever version you're upgrading to first and comparing. Um, but it should be pretty simple. So hope you guys like this, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks.